Hey, what are people are going? This is Bharati. Welcome back to yet another video. In the previous video, we learned about pop-up widgets, which are very important. And we're going to be continuing on from where we left off. More importantly, in this video, we're going to be learning about a concept called as drag and drop widgets. How exactly do you do that? And what importantly do you need for that is what we're going to be looking at in this video. I'll try to keep it as small, as small and short as possible. So let's get this uh, thing started straight away. Okay, as usual, we're going to be creating a class. If you're new to this channel or new to this uh, video series, I would highly recommend you guys to get started with the basics of PyQt5. Because what we do is we just create classes so that it's easy for us to modularize it. And we for go forward with whatever thing we're going to be learning. In this video, we're going to be learn about the drag and drop widget. So I'm going to be creating a class called as drag drop widget. Now, what exactly do you want to drag and drop? Now, what you would have learned in the previous video is that every widget uh, is everything that you have, you see is a UI component is called as a widget. For example, it could be a text widget, it could be a button widget, it could be a label widget and all of those things can be done. Now, in this example video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to drag and drop a simple button. So as usual, if you want to create buttons, we would have to be overriding certain methods inside this button. Uh, class and we'll be able to now handle the drag and drop action now you have to understand that what you think is the drag and drop is not how the computer perceives it now what pyqt5 says is that you can create an event where the drag action can happen and you can create another event where the drop action can happen technically inside the pyqt5 it is two different action but we are trying to make it look like one action and it's going to be looking seamless as well. So that's the whole goal and that's what we're going to be learning about here. So as usual, what we need is a Q push button. We just inherit the Q push button and get started. We need to obviously create an init and uh, the init for Q push button take push button takes two important parameters one is the title of the button the next is the parent of the button so in case you do not know what exactly are the parameters that a specific widget takes just go the args and quarks and it'll just be very simple from there because it automatically the python is able to take care of that for us all right just do a super dot in it and uh, pass on these parameters here and we are done all right so if we have created the init boilerplate is done we now are going to look at two important classes that are available in pyqt5 the first one is called as a q mime data the next one inside a qt core is the uh, q drag so what you're going to do is just go inside the qt gui has a which uh, as a class called as q drag we'll import that very useful next we'll go from the pyqt5 qt core and import Q mime data. All right, the Q mime data is responsible for holding mime types. So mime type objects is held inside the Q mime data, and we, we can actually transfer data between two different locations using Q mime data. I'll tell you how useful it is. We'll just also import the QT uh, class because we need to control the left action, right action, all the basic stuff is going to be held inside QT. All right, we need to override the first method inside our drag drop widget called as the mouse move event. So this mouse move event is responsible or it gets fired every single time a mouse move event action happens. So we, ob we obviously need to give it another parameter called as the event itself. It's going to be the event or itself uh, that's going to be held inside the E parameter. We can even call it event if you want. The parameter is going to be of no difference. Or is the event now holds the data about things like position, it could hold like boundary, uh, what is the data inside it, what exactly is the text that the button has, all of this information is going to be held inside this event. Every, every single time you move the button, it's going to get fired. Okay, now let's go create our first object, which is the MIME data. Okay, why exactly do we need the MIME data? What exactly is the use for that? Now the MIME data is responsible for holding an instance of the exact location of that button. For example, the Q push button could be at a location called 300, 300. Now, when you create an object of Q MIME data, what happens is that it takes a snapshot of that exact location, data inside it, everything, and holds it inside our MIME data object. Now, as we move it from 
like i told you at the start drag is a specific action drop is a specific action so when you, even we, before we drag we are getting the snapshot of that specific button and when you drop it we going to again give it back to the location where we dropped it so that it looks like the data got moved so that's what we're going to be attempting to do the mime data is now held uh, inside the mime data object and we'll just go forward now the next thing you're going to be creating is a queue drag gui object so the drag is what is responsible for the drag action so the queue drag is now what we need just give a queue drag of self object is created now we're going to be using two important methods here the first is obviously to set the mime data we are saying setting set the mime data of that snapshot to the queue drag so as you move it looks like the data get is getting moved every single time all right so next is we need to pass on the mime data all right the, the, the second method that we're going to over call inside the drag is to actually give the set hotspot method what exactly is the use for this hotspot method what happens is that when you're trying to move the cursor if you don't set the hotspot the cursor will be at some location and the button will be moving at some location that is because the pyqt does not know where exactly the cursor should be placed in in case of a movement happening so if you want the uh, the cursor to be moving along with the button we need to make sure that the hotspot is set now the hotspot is going to take a location or the is is going to take a position and where do we get a position from we get a position from the event that we have used here so the event is going to like i told you at the start data like it's going to hold data like position boundary text all of that and we can you know, set the hotspot easily through this all right next thing we have to do so we see to execute the action now what happens is that you can actually say what action should it be executed with and that is possible inside the qt um, class you can say it should be a move action all right so what exactly we are saying here is that you start or you execute the drag every time a move action is being done by the button or the, by the cursor so those is that's the explanation for those five lines of code now we have created the action for dragging the dragging purpose how do we now create the action for the move and drop purpose so that's what we're going to be looking at right now now this is actually a button it's being held inside a button now we need to create an object for this button and i'll just go ahead and start making use of the boiler play that we used so long ago which is the main widget so the main widget is inheriting a queue widget class and it's actually for the purpose of creating buttons that we learned in a couple of week a couple of uh, videos ago so what we're going to do now is to instead of the queue push button we'll override and create the drag drop widget it's again a button and you just say resize it to 260 no problem with that let's not do the click here i'll tell you why sometime all right so the button is being resized it's now kept now if you think that this is enough like you are you have created a, an object for the drag drop widget you have resized it if you think this is enough it's not enough that is primarily because you have told that the button is going to be drag and dropped and all of that is going to be created but we don't have a control of where should it be dropped and what are the actions that are permitted when you want to perform this drag and drop by default the queue widget is not going to allow queue uh, the drag and drop action so what we have to do is obviously to override two more methods inside the queue widget and that's is going to be obviously helpful in performing the drag and drop action the first method is going to be the drag enter event and it's just for it's going to take object event again and it's it's just going to say we just going to say accept just saying accept the drag action and the next thing we're going to now do is to create a drop action event so drop event is going to be overridden again takes the event as the parameter now inside this event we have to make use of leverage the move method to perform the final drop event so you have to obviously create the self dot button make sure the object is ex used outside the scope of button show very method all right so next thing we're going to do is the make use of the drop event we have created it event is present we going to say obviously event dot accept so accept the drop event uh, uh, also drop event should be present 
but before that we are going to get the position of the exact met, uh, the button before the action is being present or done so we're going to say get the position you're caught in the position now we can say self dot move self dot button dot move to the position and we are we can also say the event should now drop action awesome so i'll just quickly explain what i have written here uh, super fast we have what we have done is we have created object for the button done awesome next thing we are telling is that the widget should now accept the drag and drop events so for for accepting the drag enter event we have overridden it and said accept now for the drop event we are also going to accept it but before that we need to move the button to the specific place if the action is to drag drag is accepted when you're dropping it we need to make sure the manually creating the move method actually invoking the move method and putting it into the position so that's the use of those four lines of code inside the drop event uh, method so this is going to be done even if even if you think it's going to work now it does not work because we have to do one more step we have to say the the, the queue which should accept the actual drop action except drops of true all right so this is the step this is the things that you need to perform the drag and drop action uh, so looks a little bit complex initially but as you understand how the pyqt works you will be able to pick it up in no time all right so let's run it python 3 pyqt main all right we have gotten the click here button awesome now let's see if it is being it's it can be moved oh shit mistake I think I'm making use of the pop-up widget. We need to make use of the main widget. Let's create it, close it. Let's run it again. All right, the button is created. Click me is present. And uh, we should be able to move it. Awesome. You are now getting the cursor here, right? Has no set drop position. So what does it say? It says event has no set drop action, not position should be action oh, I think my mistake okay the method is called as action not position so just that step uh, so now we are able to move it so if you see that the cursor is being moved properly it's not like jumping here and there and I try to move it here the cursor should be moving here and there rather it's just exactly where I want it to be dropped and that's the use of that now if i do a right click i can still move it with the right click button now let's say i want to stop the right click button right what i can do is just go inside my drag drop widget and i can say if the event dot if the event dot buttons is um, not equal to see, i don't i want it to accept only my right click so i can say qt dot right button i can just return it i mean i'm saying if it is not right button just return it if it could even be the center button that you can click so let's check how it works close it <coughs> now if the right button is not being allowed nothing is being allowed i think i made some mistake even buttons mistake again sorry about that now it's allowing the right button but when i try to do with the left click it's not accepting the center is also not being accepted and that's what exactly i want so that's pretty much how you do it and you can again make use of the available button as normally you could create a as click action connect it give it some data you can do everything of that normally as you usually do with uh, the q push button now the same concept the same logic applies to other uh, widgets as well it could be q label q text anything you want you can just use it in similar fashion and perform the drag and drop action so that's pretty much what i want to convey as part of this video hope this was informative if you found it informative you know what to do drop that like and subscribe to the channel for more content on qt pi qt5 and other python libraries and other concepts and i'll, I'll meet you there next video is very cool we're going to be learning about the qt designer I'm excited to go there let's get this uh, thing entire series wrapped up uh, let me meet you there until then it's Bharat. peace out have a super awesome day